SACPA acknowledges that this event takes place on the lands of the Blackfoot people and Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3, and we pay respect to their past, present, and future cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship to the land. SACPA commits to assist reconciliation efforts by raising awareness of the ways past and present injustices can be reconciled. So our speaker today is Alona Sinchuk. She will be speaking on her escape from Ukraine during Putin's special military operation. When I first spoke to Alona, I thanked her for accepting our invitation, and she said, I have to do something. Then I asked her if she needed a PowerPoint presentation, and she said, this will be all from my heart. So please welcome Alona Sinchuk. It's too high. Hi, everyone. My name is Alona, and first thing that I want to tell you is uh, English, not my native language, and sorry about that. <laughs> so if you will not understand something because I have accent or you want to ask me, just I'm open for everything. And I really hate this thing just because I'm afraid I never do such thing, I never speak to so many people here so I can cry sometimes but it's also okay just give me a minute <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, as I say my name is Alona and I am 38 years old I have two kids and it's a boy like 14 and almost 13 years a teenager and they here with me and uh, they are my big support and we escaped from the war we escaped from the ukraine after after russia investigation like after russia come to our land so before I was living in Dnipro. It's the east part uh, of Ukraine. It's not. Uh, it's not far from from the first line of fighting, you know. And when it all started, uh, it was big, dangerous to stay there, and I need to protect my kids. So that's why I decided to to go somewhere like almost scary thing it was if they will bump uh, railway station because we will stay without like without uh, any possibility to go somewhere because because so and it was really scary you never know what this war is just because we're, as i tell a little before you you know the story from like from your grandma and you know the story from your grandfather and you know the story from the history because you know ukrainian people is always fighting they always fighting for the freedom for the like we want to live and we independence and we strong and we every time just need to prove something to prove that we are we are strong to prove that we are free free nations that we independence we every time just need to prove something to to prove to russia it's our history but okay okay we we did this before and we do this now and we will do it in the future if we will need to do this because it's in our blood you know so uh, the first the first week we stay in Dnipro and and hiding you know and hiding because you don't know what to do you you don't have rules you don't know how like where to go what to do you just need you you just know that you should protect you should be in safety you should you should do something for like you should do something okay the most scary thing it was like for me 
it's to have this emergency bag like for me for and uh, for two of my kids and you put there like a little blanket because when you go to basement it's cold uh, some food that don't need to be prepared like some food that you can eat like in first day of the war it's scary because it's not the usually thing that you used to do in your current life so this like three bags it was almost scary thing in my life because they always uh, like stay uh, stayed uh, around like under my door I think I I can be wrong but they stay there and it was scary because it means that you need to run and I write phone numbers all phone numbers for my son like with little piece of paper and just in case because Because you never know, you never know. Too many kids that go to sleep and don't wake up because, because they just come. You never know. Sorry? Okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, my friends, I don't have a husband, we divorced, so with my kid I was alone there in Nibro. So my friends <clears throat> said to me that I will not stay anymore like in my house and I need support. So they taken me away to, he to, to them house and will stay there probably 10 days and it was like we close our windows I have thank you thank you okay thank you no it's okay <laughs> so uh, we close like with the, with the woods our windows we use a tape like scotch we call it scotch like taping for our windows just because when something explosion we don't want this little pieces uh, going like and hurt someone so it was one of the things that we do it's not usual like i'm telling this it's it's what i did but it's not usual it's not usual for all of us to do this thing you know we have normal life i'm going to my work my kids go into them school and they loved there my younger son plays soccer and uh, my older son play uh, on a musical instrument ukrainian musical it's uh, bandura and they really like this they like them life i like it too i was i was deputy director in eye clinic and <coughs> i love my co-workers they st uh, they still write to me and we speak with them and they still stay there and you know i have my friends i have my parents and then they stay now in ukraine it's too hard because like now i build my life i have my life i have my good life there in ukraine i have my happy life but now i'm trying to build one new life like under my last life but it's okay i really appreciate that for your help for for any help for it for all good words that i heard 
Thank you so much. So when we escaped, because it was too dangerous, they came to Kherson and we they start to rape in our women's and it was in our news. And we start to be afraid like we have I think it was three of my friends, they was a man and they told told us they just because we don't want to go anywhere but they came to us like we have such a such a family meeting and they told us we cannot protect you if they will come to our house just understand it we have four kids we have five women and we need to save you we cannot protect you from them if they will have gun we don't have nothing so we just need to we just need to go somewhere because it's it's scary you know it's just scary so we take our our bags i leave all my stuffs in my flat I have only my like small bags, like emergency bag. And we go like we start our trip to the west part of Ukraine just because it was more safety. And one month we stay there. Like it was not so far from Poland. Uh, and it was it was safety it was without explosion it was without bomb it's it was safety you know so we stay there probably for one month uh, uh, on that time like for this month I'm start to I'm start to to think and to do something because because you know kids need to have education they need to have stability they need to have possibility to go to school to have your friends not afraid this noise you know siren and i decide that we should like move somewhere because i need to give them i need to give them this stability so for me for me canada was like one from options just because it was understandable as i say canada have rules and you should do like one two three steps and you will get what you what you want what is your main goal you you will you will got this if you if you want something you need to do so I start to I start to open my visa then and thanks really Canadian government because it they are not charging us for for anything N nothing we we don't pay nothing but yeah we sorry <laughs> sometimes I just forgot this word okay we don't pay uh, we don't pay for for nothing but the most hard thing it was like you know you do, um, embassy of Canada was closed in Ukraine so for a biometry like when you get your fingers you need to sorry fingerprints, fingerprints thank you so much you need to cross a board and it's i think it's almost hard things that that you that you should do because I, for example me i leave my kids for for two days and cross the board just to to give this finger fin, fingerprints and then i it's okay like to leave kids like i leave them with my grandma it's okay but it's far there so when you go you just don't 
you just don't know you know it's not about like some physical action it's about your mental it's about how you think because everything is dangerous so my Canadian visa like I get probably in May but when I only start this I find Project Sunflower uh, on Facebook and I write them. I fill the form and I write them and they give me response like for next day and it was it was something like it was some so, some kind of miracle for me because when you stay there and you don't know what to do, you even don't apply for this visa, you, d you don't do nothing, but Misha already write you that we wait for you if you need something, yes, yeah, sure, sure. There is like so far from you, some people that, that, you know, they ready to help you and they even don't know you. So yeah, it was some kind of miracle. And he told me that if you will have your, like, when you will have your visa, you just let me know and we will find something for you. Okay, and when I get it in May, he told me, okay, I'm starting to look in for you, house for you and your kids, and just tell me when you will when when you will get your tickets i buy my tickets and it was june 22nd and he told me you know uh for now like it it was conversation in may and he told me you know i cannot tell you now where you will live with whom you will live but i really promise you that we will find something for you and it was scary, you know, because I have tickets, I have two kids, I go in like to very, very like strange, like I never was in Canada, I don't have anyone in Canada. <laughs> and what is something will be wrong? What is Misha is not Misha? Like what happened if I will come like in Calgary? What I will do? Like what, what, what I will do, but everything was okay he didn't give me response like till probably it was um it was 20 of june because I, my ticket i have on the 23rd of june and i have response from misha it was 20 of june probably two days before my uh, my oh. my flight sick thank you so much and he told me yeah you have Jody, and I will again cry. <laughs> and uh, she actually ready to to take you and take care of you. So you know, it was. I really want to tell you that I am not nervous. On that time, I I was sure that I can, I can trust these people. I don't know why, but something inside of me just. I don't know why, but I was really sure that everything will be good. Everything is will be okay. And then I came. Then I came here to Canada and meet with, meet with Misha, like in the real life, <laughs> and meet with Jody in the real life, and it was it was warm, you know. I told you that. I tell every everyone and I tell my relatives and friends because they all very worried about me because two kids and you alone what you will do I never feel alone like from the first time when I came here to Lesbridge never never I don't have 
any lonely day in my life i every time do something i every time go to somewhere i have too many peoples here that i can just call and ask something to tell something i have my canadian friends i have my ukrainian friends i have i really happy my kids is happy they also speak english they go into the school easy they help another ukrainian kids like to to understand something you know to understand system they feeling good and they really like canada and when i speak like it was yesterday actually i speak with my son and tell him oh my god i'm just it should be christmas and you know i go to visit my my parents uh on easter and on christmas so that one is here but it's okay i have new friends i will have a new christmas tree <laughs> I already have it. <laughs> yeah. And they really, they don't want to move from Canada. It's only about me. I miss, like, I miss Ukraine and they know. They not, sorry. So I really appreciate for all people that around me for warm that I feel. For that feeling that you never feel I really I'm just I really I never feel lonely in this country never so I really appreciate for this really all of you because when I work I meet people and I speak with them and I speak with them and the first thing they, they that they ask me oh my god you have such sweet accent just where are you from <laughs> and i know my accent is not so sweet but i really appreciate it i really i i really grateful for for this like you know kind of conversation sometimes they cannot understand what exactly i work in the fii doctor i work in on reception and i uh I call people, I do pretest for them, I speak with them every day and yeah, sometimes they really don't understand me, but but English not my native, so sorry about that, but I'm really grateful for this possibility to work there. And all Canadian, when they, the next step that they do, like when they already know this information that I am from Ukraine and they say really it's so great can I hug you please so <laughs> I have too many hugs on my work <laughs> yeah and I really appreciate for this it's very very important I speak with another Ukrainian families you know that uh, is it here and it's very important, you know, really. And I really thank you for this, because all we human, and thank you, really, really thank you. Yeah. I know, uh, I know that I something missing my story because you know it's emotional. When you're emotional, you just every time something miss. And I'm pretty sure when I will came to my home, <laughs> I will remember such thing and I will think, oh my God, you can tell this. Oh no, why you just forget about this? Yeah, I know I will do this. So, so i will appreciate if you ask me something and i really i can 
I can give you an answer probably you interested in something it's easy for me so again <laughs> sorry about my English <laughs> but I really try it sorry <laughs> yeah thank you Alona that was very wonderful very right from the heart like you said yeah so before we yeah So before we go to uh, questions, uh, just a few announcements here. First of all, we thank uh, to uh, LSCO for providing us this room free of charge. And uh, we hope that you can patronize their uh, lunch counter to help, to help them with the cost. And we thank the University of Lethbridge for their ongoing support of SACPA. Thank you for Shaw TV and Bridge City, Bridge City TV for recording our sessions. And you can watch this session on Shaw Spotlight as well as on YouTube uh, on our website, the SACPA website. So next week's speaker will be uh, Maria Fitzpatrick and she'll be speaking on domestic violence. Okay. Now for the question and answer period, please uh, come in on the side, state your name and your question briefly. No long preludes, please. If you prefer to write your question, those are uh, those questions that are signed can be put in the back and then I'll, I'll be able, you can bring them to me and I can read them for you. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so we'll have the first question. So state your name and. Oh, I need to go. Hi, Alana. Yes. Um, hi, Barb Phillips. Uh, I, I speak as a, gra a mom and a grandma. Yeah. Uh, your story is, is so impactful, it's so lovely to meet you, but uh, the story is similar to many in Lethbridge because I've met a lot of new Canadians that have come here uh, with the Syrian families and so on, and the stories are similar and they grab at you, but I'm just glad you're safe. So my question's not much, can I hug you? Yes. <laughs> well done. And you are safe, you're safe, your kids are safe, and that's all that counts yeah. right you. now. Hi. My name is Pat Anderson, and everything what she just said. But I would like to know, you mentioned your children are learning English in school with their friends. Yeah. That's the way that young people learn friends. And did you learn some English while you were with your children in the Ukraine, maybe like in school? And the ages of your two sons, and have they had a birthday since since the, the terrible war started, Putin promised we're not going to war, we're just doing maneuvers. Have you had a birthday with your sons? Thank That's you. Thank you. Um, about English, I didn't practice my English like 20 years. I study like, I, yeah, I have classes of my English only in my school and it was it was 20 or 22 years ago I didn't speak English all this time but when I was in school I really was obsessive by English you know dreams came true when I was in grade 11 I really dream about something of United States, something of <laughs> Canada, and I really was obsessive about English. I want to know, I listen to music, I listen to sound, and I, it was more than school gave me. But 20 years is last, and when I just cross a border, I don't know why. But I'm, I'm just starting to speak, start to understand. I don't know why, really, really. I didn't practice. I, I didn't, yeah, am I right? Like, I didn't practice English, like, all this year. About my kids, it's also about my obsessive. I really, I really want, 
give him uh, give them this knowledge just because you know English is one of the languages that everybody speak uh, when you when you travel somewhere English only one like language that you can speak with someone so they have extra classes and that's the only thing that I pay money for this so it wasn't like it was good like for me it was right decision to pay for these classes so now they just can speak English yeah Lynn yeah they can speak English yeah they can say how they feel what they want they they have good marks marks in a Canadian school so they doing great thank you about birthdays ah actually we will have like one birthday my younger son will have birthday one month later it will be December 14 and my older son and me it's april so it's only when the war started so it wasn't like big celebration it just once was simple day that's it okay hi my name is laurie schultz and alona thank you very very much for your story um your your courage um, is is just amazing. So thank you for sharing uh, sharing your story. Um, in your journey, you mentioned that you you made contact with Misha through Project Sunflower, but you also mentioned that you had to just trust. Yep that Misha was who yeah. Misha said yeah. they were. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if at that time, uh, or if you are aware now, are there, is there any, any people or embassy or how does one, is there anything a person who wants to leave the Ukraine can do to know that whoever they're communicating with to leave Ukraine is a safe person, as opposed to maybe a human trafficker. You know, is there, did anyone help you with that? Or are you aware if there, is, is there anyone you could go to and say, is this person or agency legitimate? And that's my question. Uh, if I understand like this question right, so uh, I'm just trying to give you an answer. No, we don't have any person. All we have is that it's Facebook, and Facebook and email. You know, that's it. That's it. And I just want to explain when uh, you escape from the war. I don't, uh, I don't like speak about like people who live in Europe and just make a decision to move like to Canada, you know, because when you, it's only my opinion. I know that uh, most of Ukrainians think also like my way when you don't uh, hear noises of siren and when you don't know what is war is like when it's not happened with you you cannot understand directly so what i mean uh, when you escape you have only one you have one opportunity just to trust because you cannot like what you will do nothing everything that everything that you have it's only it's only you and your experience and your strong insights that's it that's it even i'm just starting to to think that what if you know this game like what if what if they will not meet us? What if they will not find our like house for us? What if? 
and I'm starting to think what if because it's not only about me it's for me and for my kids it's not only about myself you know so there is no like person who stay in Ukraine or like who I can trust and to feel it like no no I just need to I just need to trust that's it that's the only options but I glad really sunflowers it's really big it, it's really good organization and I really appreciate them really they are they are real you can touch them so I'm lucky you know I'm lucky <laughs> yeah that's it I think yeah Hi Alona, my name is Henning Mundel. When I was this high, I was a refugee from the east to the west, but I, you know, I hardly remember. But, uh, okay, it keeps moving on me. I'm trying to adjust my stance and it moves without my touching it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I, there's a couple of questions I have. Um, one is, I, I have a distant relative in uh, Kiev. We were only in touch through through genealogy since f early February. Yeah. On February 22nd, he wrote to me that the West, President Biden, thinks the Russians are invading. He said, nonsense. Well, two days later, it happened. So my one question is, where were you were in Dnieper, did you already expect it? That's, you know. yeah. See, because I know what this was, I can. Yeah, and then I have another yeah. follow-up sure. question. I will give you an answer. Yeah. When you say like 22nd of February, it's make me like gas and bombs, yeah. you know, because I think it's the day when all started. On that day, all radios and all TV channel just start a line of one news. Just imagine you live your normal life. You watch your, you watch your movies. You watch your news. You know that at two o'clock you you will have some uh, some show, some serial. Mm. And when you wake up in the morning, just because we have one program that we listen every every morning because it's our tradition, it's funny and it's good to wake up. And when I turned on my radio and it was like line of one use and it was just training and it was scary. It was first day when I was scary. So yeah. what can I say? Yeah. I I don't know. Everything is starts from this from the day. Yeah. Thank That's you. It. And the second one the program you came on, yeah. the way I understand it, yeah. it, is, it isn't the official refugee route to Canada, but through the special Canada-Ukraine emergency yeah. program. Yeah. Now, you mentioned your children, how they're settling in. Yeah. But you probably have plans eventually to go back to Ukraine when it is safe, if it is safe. What do you think your children will feel? Oh. Thank you for these questions. <laughs> really, oh, like I escaped from Ukraine because of my children. I'm stay here because of my children. I really like uh, life here, and I, I'm, I'm not tired to say it. I really appreciate. I really appreciate. I have my first work here in Canada and its work is good for me. I work in eye cleaning. Uh, they open like door for me and I really appreciate. So uh, we can stay here for three years uh, because we have permit, like uh, work permit. I have work permit and they can stay here with me, like study permit or visitor visa, they can stay here to get this, uh, to get this study. And who knows, you know, I never know that, that war will, will start it. For now, I, I don't know what to do really. Every time I hear this question, what you will do when war, war is stopped, what you will do like, 
will you go to Ukraine? I don't know, really, I don't know. I even don't know how, like, which answer, like, I should give you because I really, I don't know. The war, uh, you know, after that, I'm starting to think. I I afraid to think about something about future. I really I afraid. I it's scary because because I'm scary. I like Kyiv and when I see like you know Instagram <laughs> stories stories from the Kyiv like they make a video and it's painful really painful painful that my parents still there but it's okay they will survive we need to win this war that's it thank you thank you my name is Knut Peterson uh, thank you very much for coming to spill your heart you. it's really an amazing story to listen to uh, my question relates to uh, when Russia invaded Crimea in 2014, I believe, and the West basically didn't do much to didn't do much about. It. So my question basically relates to: I, Were you surprised? to see how the West came together largely and other countries to help Ukraine in this situation? Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, when they take away, like, they, uh, Crimea, uh, it was first surprise, actually. <laughs> when they take away it and it's without on without any shots and on that time i stay on you i think you all know what we that that we have my done on that time in ukraine and we fighting we fighting for our oh my god for our independence for our freedom like for democracy we and they take away Crimea. But Yanukovych escaped. But except Yanukovych, we have too many people that stay in our government and still support Russia. And only now, like only now I can see how how all countries can support how how they can support us if they see that someone's from political, like someone's from government, and it was really almost, it was too many people there that support Russia. So what they want, you know? It's confusing when you see that people fighting, like people stay on Maidan, and the government is tell that we support Russia, so, what they what they need to do you know if you're not inside you cannot understand you can you can only like watch on this all so yeah when they i have my neighbors and when we have since given like they they told me you know uh we think like we thought that they will take Kiev for three days and we was very surprised where, when you stand, stand like you brave and you stand and you protect your lands. I think these three days that we fight, that we stand and we don't give up, I think only these three days show all words that we will not give up. It's our land, so yeah. And thank you, our president. He is very brave. If if not this president, we will never like we will never have all that we have for today. So I was surprised when all countries start to help us. Really, I was surprised. But I also was surprised when 
they didn't tell nothing when they take away Crimea. So if they, you know, if turn time back, if they say something then, we probably will not have this war today, such a big war today. But we wasn't like, I think we, we was not ready to this fight on that time. Now, yeah, we ready. But on that time, no, no. Not with that government that we have. Today, yeah. Zelensky is speaking from all of us. He is speaking like we speak, like my father speak, like, like my neighbors speak in Ukraine. You know, they speak with, from like they speak our voices. So we really appreciate for this. Yeah, yeah. My name is Terry Shillington. Thank you very much for coming and sharing. I have a question. Uh, um, before the war started, our media suggested that uh, lots of Ukrainians, some Ukrainians on the eastern side of Ukraine, were really would really welcome the Russians and and speak Russian and uh, would be happy to be part of Russia. That was before the war. Uh, my impression. <coughs> Nowadays. Are there many of those people still around? Uh, are there many Russian-speaking people who would like to be part of Russia, or has that mood changed? Okay. Okay. You know that everything that I say is just only my opinion and what I see now and like what I analyzed and from the people that I know and. Um, the point is, I was, I was born, I was born in the central of Ukraine. I have like, mm, I live in Kiev. It's a capital of Ukraine, like almost 13 years. Before I got my study in the west of U of Ukraine, and the two and a half last years, I live in the east of Ukraine. And believe me, it's just difference like West, East and Central part of Ukraine, it's very different people. Uh, in my current life, I speak Ukrainian and I really not support like people like before I moved to the East, I not support people who speak Russian. But when I moved to Dnipro, it's the east of Ukraine, almost people there, all, uh, uh, most of people, sorry, most of people there, they speak Russian and it's okay, like for me it's okay, they also Ukrainian, they also support. Dnipro, for now, it's a hub, you know, it's almost big city that give almost big support for military. We have in Dnipro, we have almost bigger hospitals. So it's a first line to get a help like for military. So and it doesn't when they speak Russia, it doesn't mean that they support Russia. Some people from my friends change their mind really. They support Russia before investigation. But these people who came to our house just show us that there is nothing to support. We we different, just we different. So yeah, they change, they change her mind, their mind. Yeah, sorry. Yes, I get the last question. Leona Jacobs. So my curiosity yeah. is that you've been here now for four, five, five months. months, five months. And at the start of the war, we heard a lot about the exodus, a lot of people trying to get out of Ukraine and coming here. Well, coming everywhere, but here too. And that's kind of lowered in the news cycle. Mm -hmm. We hear about the war, but we don't really hear about too much more about the people in a big way. So, are you in contact with people in the Ukraine, and are you are you 
have you been motivated by your own experience to become part of the the support network for people getting out of the Ukraine now? Uh, okay. I uh, I speak, of course, I have too many friends and they stay in Dnipro, which is side and only today I speak with my friends because today Dnipro was bombed and we have too many victims there. So, and too many because I live there two with half years and they stay my friends. So, you know, we, we strong, but we are joking. Like I asked Natasha, so, how are you today? Like, how was your day? Because when I wake up, uh, them day is just almost over and I start to read the news. And she say, you know, yeah, we have victims, but uh, I really want to see a rocket. And I, today was first day that I heard this noise when he not explode but just fly and I was really disappointed because I don't have enough time to run it and I say oh my god we talk about bomb we still talk about bombs and you just easy for now it's like you know for now it's easy to speak about bomb it's okay like it, it's not okay we didn't used to but we know what to do with this and the first time like it's first reaction you need to be safe and you have some money that you put like you place it in a saving account for example and you just spend them to like for example me i buy a ticket to canada and i have like i have some like couple dollars to what if like you know what if misha will not meet him about people who want to go like like to move from ukraine for now uh i think they stay and they trying to leave so i didn't know like for now in my like uh from my friends i didn't know anyone who wants to move from ukraine they leave you know they have they have job they have own house they have it's hard but if you know when you Soviet Union is tell me this word we were separate like two for too many countries <laughs> and we have times when we don't have electricity we don't have what to eat it was very scary time and I think it was some kind of training for this war so people just have this experience how to survive but we still we don't want to be with Russia. We will stay without electricity, we will stay without water, we will stay without warm, but we don't want to be with Russia. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much for coming and sharing from your heart. I can't imagine how hard your trip has been, and I'm glad that the Canadians that you found were honest and truthful, and, and it was lucky for you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, you mentioned about your parents, and you just mentioned about your friends and how they're managing. Could you tell us a little bit more about um, where your parents are and how, if they're safe and how they are managing? Thank okay. you. Okay, please love to, please love to, I will tell you. Uh, my parents live in not far from Vinica. It's a central part part of Ukraine. Oh my, yeah, it's a central part. And um, one week ago, I think, when I speak with my mom, it was explosion probably 20 kilometers from them because they have electricity station you know russia today today is their main goal to destroy our electricity um thank you so much infrastructure structure so they just start to bomb everything um they're good they really they're doing good 
they every time tell me that don't worry about us everything is good we have what to eat because they have plant they have potatoes you know in ukraine almost important thing that you have potatoes <laughs> then <laughs> it's mean <laughs> it's mean you never will be hungry never because it's too many things that you can cook from potatoes, but it's okay. <laughs> so they they have um, um, like fireplace in our house, so they will not cold. Uh, they have work for now, and it's good. It's good. My friends in Kiev, they don't have they don't have electricity. They, it's funny thing, but you know, it's about us, it's about Ukrainian, it's how we live now, it's how we survive, and it's normal for us. So when I call my friends and he told, he, she, she, sorry, she just sent me and tell me, okay, okay, but I, uh, sorry, I hate Russia. <laughs> She told she told Bedford, I even cannot dry my hair. I, oh my God! So it's just it's about it's about our country. It's about our people. So okay, there is no uh, there is no electricity. Okay, I will go to restaurant to eat. So something like that. We don't disappoint uh, disappoint. We we just trying to live. We just trying to to smile. So. Everything is good. We just afraid like it doesn't it doesn't freak us out for now, you know? It's okay. For us it's it's okay. It's okay. sometimes it's scary because you every time thinking about people who who die. But it doesn't freaking us out like in the first couple couple weeks and months so they good and they don't want to move from Ukraine. <laughs> they stay there. Yeah. Is that it? So this will have the last question. Lorna, thank you again. I just have a question about kind of the financial infrastructure. Yeah. So was the banking system or is the banking system still working or have people had to adjust how they um, you know get their paychecks or or access their savings to just touch on that a bit Thanks. it's my actually favorite tema because bank it's almost hard like for me in Canada it's almost hard system like ever like because every time when I speak with bank I'm every time just crying i'm just crying because i don't know what to tell how to explain why you why should i just block my credit card if i tell you just block this this billing i don't want to pay any more to this company they just they, they, they lie to me they okay everything is good in ukrainian all banks work very good we have perfect bank system really i have i use my ukrainian card and i know that all ukrainian use them ukrainian card here in canada it's easy it's much more easy than here in canada and nobody can like fool you. <laughs> you you know before you nobody will take your money without your agreement so it doesn't work like you pay one time for something and they every uh, every weeks they will charge you for what I didn't want to buy and uh, I didn't want but I, I I don't know what is going on and I call to bank and say just please stop it I don't want to, I don't want to buy and they say oh the only one option that you have is to block your card how it's work really how it's work I have too many like bills to my card it's mobile my uh, my rent my uh, i don't know i have too many stuff that i pay but the only one options it's 
I must block my card and start my life credit like like this story again why only for one bills no in Ukrainian bank works very good like if the if you pay even in in shop or you buy something on uh, from internet uh, they will send you a code do you approve this operation they will not charge you not charge you they will uh, you need to approve this operation and it's about your phone they will call you like is this true do you really want to pay for this or something like this yeah so banks still works good <laughs> thank you <laughs> I I think you have to make sure that your boys don't have uh, access to your credit card. Yes, I say good. <laughs> Two teenagers, right? <laughs> yeah, but they good. I trust yeah. you. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you very much, Alona. Thank you. Do you have a take-home message, a last message for us before yeah. we leave? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, thank you. No. It's, you know, the first word that I want to say is just thank you and I really appreciate for your open ha uh, hearts, for your open arms, for your open doors because really I'm the almost like important thing for me that I really appreciate and I will, I will tell this like many times. I appreciate that I didn't feel lonely like I really appreciate for this and it's not about some kind of person it's about yeah sure about lean it's about my Jody it's about all people that I have about my neighbors and about like but it's not about one person it's all of you guys you know because when you go somewhere you know that everybody is good nobody will hurt n nobody will hurt you and I really appreciate for this. Really appreciate. Really, really. For for all of you down here. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we hope to see you all next week when Marie Fitzpatrick will be talking about domestic violence. <laughs>